Hello, everybody, and happy Thursday. Welcome to Adaptable Entrepreneurs with me, your host, Lisa Kipps Brown. And I'm very honored tonight to have Honoré Corder, who I met Honoré last year in Nashville at Steve Sims Speakeasy. And she is not only an author who has, what do you have, like 53 bestsellers and over $4 million in sales, but she also helps people write their own book. And you also do ghostwriting, right? I don't do the ghostwriting piece. I have ghostwriters that do okay. that piece, but I do the production piece. So for okay. some people, I do the whole rest of the process. Yeah. Okay. So I want you to introduce yourself and tell us about your background and how you got into what you're doing. Okay. Awesome. So my background is um, executive and business coaching, corporate training, corporate training, motivational speaking. And I met Mark Victor Hansen, who most people would know is the co-creator of Chicken Soup for the Soul book mm -hmm. series. And when I met him, he said, what do you do? And I was very proud of myself, Lisa. I said, oh, I'm a coach and a speaker. And I did a little hair flip. And he was like, yeah, that's nice. Everybody's a coach and a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you better write a book. You must write a book. And I had all those things go through my head that go, I think go through a lot of people's heads. Like, oh, well, okay, who am I to write a book? What would I write about? Who would want to read a book by me? Mm -hmm. what, what do I have to say? All of, the, all of the things. But I took that advice that he gave me and I acted on it and it changed my life. It changed my career, it changed my business, it changed my trajectory, it opened doors for me. And so now I very passionately um, encourage other people to write and publish their books and I help them, some of them through the process. I think that's so awesome that you acknowledged what you felt because that's what everybody feels like. Yes, I think and, you're right. And yeah. I think they don't think other people feel like that, especially somebody like you who's written 53 books. And well, but then I had it, I had written zero. With I know that's I what I'm saying. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, you were them. You're Correct. like, yes. Like you said, what do I have to say? Why would anybody what have write? Yes. So what was your first book that you wrote? My first book was Tall Order, mm -hmm. um, Seven Master Strategies to Organize Your Life and Double Your Success in Half the Time, also known as a super long and bad subtitle, but it was my first book, right? So I've also done all the wrong things, made all the mistakes, all of them. I've made all of them, probably most of them twice or three times <laughs> in the process. So I, I know all the potholes and, and speed bumps and things that people encounter in the process. But the answer that that I got from Mark was, you need to have a book to differentiate yourself from the other people who do what you do. Right. And if you have a message that you deliver, and that what he meant at that time was, if you have a presentation that you deliver that people like, turn that into your book. Yeah. And so that's exactly what I did. I asked a bunch of more questions in that conversation and took his advice to heart. And then I acted on it. Mm -hmm. And I went through the exciting beginning and the crappy middle and that end, those, that last 10% that feels like the last 50% that's terrible and you think it's never, you right, you've done this. Yeah. You think it's never going to be done. But then I got to reap the rewards of setting that goal and following through and getting the book out into the world. And it absolutely expanded my universe. Um, and every book since then has done the same thing that is so cool so tell us so that was your very first book yeah. and once you got it written what did you do to promote it and was it self-published or what yep all my books have been self-published except for the foreign translations those go through mm -hmm. the um foreign rights firm and yeah. they do all the foreign translations um so once i published it actually while i was waiting for it to be printed so it's a paperback book is in printing speak a perfect bound document, right? Yeah. So while the paperback is at the printers, I have all this time on my hands and I'm waiting for these 5,000 books that I've ordered. Yeah. And Mark Victor Hansen said that when he and Jack Canfield were working to promote Chicken Soup, the original Chicken Soup book, they did seven things every day to market their book. Well, yeah. when I first published my book, it was 2004. So we didn't have the Facebook or right. Instagram or stream yard right mm -hmm. we really facebook wasn't around at all for adults right yeah it was around in 2004 2005 it was definitely not for you and me 
Mm -hmm. Um, But so I did what he had suggested, which was go to my local newspaper and talk to them, go to the local business journal and talk to them, call everyone in my Rolodex, remember (laughs) Rolodexes? Now it would be the contact list on your phone. And Mm -hmm. he said, just tell everyone you have a book and ask them if they want to buy between 10 and 100 copies. Okay. So after I had done that, then I started saying, well, would you like to buy between 10 and 1,000 copies or 100 and 1,000 copies? And so I was able to sell 11,000 copies in three weeks. Wow. And so so, wait a minute. So like the newspapers and stuff were buying them? No, no. I just went to them and said, I have a book coming out. Do you have any any?" feature article that you could do yeah, on a local okay. author, right? Those sorts of things. Yes. But then I also went through my contact list and just reached out to past clients, okay. present clients, contacts, people that I knew and said, I have this book and here's what it's about. Here's who it can help. And would you like to buy some And the, that very simple approach, that very simple question. And I called a lot of people, 11,000 books is a lot of books. And I didn't realize until many years later, when I started to tell my story that 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 was actually interesting that anyone would care about that because I thought everybody yeah. did that. I was a I was a self-published author, bless my heart, right? Mm-hmm. I wasn't traditionally published. I didn't go through a publisher, so I didn't feel that I was worthy. Yeah, and it wasn't as and, common then and it was kind of like no. oh, it's self-published. No, I know yes. Yeah. Yes, people but uh, but I did it in such a way that it looked professional. Professional, yeah. And I had it designed and I had a professional cover and I had an editor and I had, you know, I had some, some basic things that now are mandatory. You can't get away with, with not doing those things anymore, right? right? You can't just write and publish a book and put it on Amazon. Well, you can, but it's not going to be as effective as if you take the time to dot your I's and cross your T's. And so that's what I did is I just got the book out there. And then I started not only wanting to sell books, but also to sell my services. So to sell my coaching services, my business and executive coaching services, I was using my book as a lead magnet to to open doors and to engage clients. And if there are two people that do exactly the same thing, but one of them has a book, guess what? Exactly. Yeah. 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 The author wins every time. Well, the the first book I wrote was in the 90s. In 97, it was a technical book. And I know I'm one of these people, I tend to work best under pressure. I'm not a good person at do a little every day. I'm one of those blast it through. As a matter of fact, my last book I wrote in a weekend, but, but it was because everything is already in my head and it's already in there. Yes. I love that. The last book was basically, what do I preach to my clients and what I want? What, what do I want them to take more seriously? So if I put it in the book, they'll believe it. But the one I wrote back in the nineties, it was a technical book. And I knew I had to have something to create a sense of urgency in myself. So I started advertising in sale and yachting magazine and stuff okay. because it was a technical guide for, for Marine surveyors and stuff. And I started advertising. Done. The book is coming out in September Order now you get 25% off, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, now I got to write the damn book. Yeah. And now you better get it. Exactly. <laughs> when I had to have it to the printer. I had to have it to the printer on like August 2nd. And I was like, blah, blah, blah. Work. But I did it and I got it there right on time and I had pre-sold a bunch of them. So it does, it really, it's a great way to get, it's it's a great way to motivate yourself, but it's a great way to also bring in some cash while while you're waiting. And of course, back then we didn't have print, print on demand like now. No, it's so much uh, nicer in some, in many ways to be able to, to indie publish because you retain all of the rights and the control and the creative control and the content control and the cash control, Mm -hmm. but you don't have to buy like I did my first order. The reason I was so urgent around selling books is because I'd order 5,000 books. Yeah. I did not want 5,000 books collecting dust in my garage. Yeah. You had yeah, you had to pay yeah. for them and store them. Yeah. Yes. But, and, you know, talking about how people didn't used to view um, independently published books as as legitimate. I mean, I know a lot of people that are best selling authors that are self publishing now because they're sick of dealing with the big publishing houses. Uh-huh. You know, New York Times best selling authors, and they're like, you know what? They're not really doing anything for me. I don't need them, you know? Uh-huh. And, um, 
they're just fed up with it. And I think the publishing industry is kind of like kind of where the music industry, you know, they don't take it seriously. And then all of a sudden they find they're kind of irrelevant. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. It's it, every day is, is there's some sort of step. Yeah. Right? Every day there's some sort of uh, new product or feature that comes out or, mm -hmm. um, the online retailers like Amazon or iBooks are doing unique things for their indie authors to help promote them. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. It's very cool. So you, you pre-sold all those books and then the book came out. What did you do to sell it then? Um, I really didn't, I didn't do a lot. I had, it was Kindle was brand new. And so yeah. I put the ebook up on Kindle, but I didn't know anybody that had a Kindle. As a matter yeah. of fact, it was about three years later that one of my clients said, Oh, I have all your books, That's you know, funny. that you've done that you've done on Kindle. I said, let me see this Kindle. Oh, I didn't funny. realize that I was going to have, I think I'm on like my 18th Kindle or something now. Oh, <laughs> Look, I love them. I, I love the Kindle um, myself but I wasn't really focused on selling books. I was really using the books to market my coaching and speaking business. Mm -hmm. I was, I was an amateur. I didn't know then what I know now about the two different things about having a book. One is you market the book for royalties and the other one is you market with your book to right. generate new business or new customers or new clients or whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. new engagements, whatever that looks like in your business, you can use your book, um, not just directly, but also through strategic partners, give your best yeah. referral sources, 25 copies of your book and let them give it to their 25 best clients. And then you have a three way win. Yeah, right? you as the author win, the person receiving the book wins, and then mm -hmm. the giver of the book actually wins too, because they're doing something nice for their clients and their clients appreciate it. That's right. As a matter of fact, well, my last book was called Boomer Cash Out and it was about using the web to increase the value and marketability of your business so you can sell it for retirement. So mm -hmm. I actually have people like investment advisors and financial planners and CPAs that I know that I give them an ebook version that's branded like with their logo. Yep. It's like, yep. this yep. is a gift for you, whatever they want to own it. Yep. And then they, yep. It looks like they've paid for something and you know, I'm helping them. They're helping me and it's getting the word out. That's well, right. we, that book that I wrote back in the nineties, um, it was sold in Barnes and Noble and Borders and on Amazon. And that was back when a lot of people didn't even know what Amazon was and it was still only books. Oh my gosh. Most right? people didn't know what it was. And so it, it it's funny how so much changes though. Yes. Um, and it, it's, it's, now I think Amazon is where we get everything, right? Not just books, but also books. Like everything. Yeah. Everything. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking at my desk and it's like, what didn't come from Amazon? <laughs> I know. I know. And the funny yeah. thing is I was, I was talking to somebody the other week and I was like, yeah, when I first started my web, web um, design business in 96, you know, there was no Google. I don't even know if you're old enough to remember Alta Vista. Do you remember Alta Vista? Oh, Vista? sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. So oh, yes. in Alta Vista, I mean, even though that was a search engine, if the stuff wasn't on the web, it couldn't index it. So I had no resources to go to to wow. teach myself what I needed to know. I could, You couldn't buy shopping carts then. I had to develop my own shopping cart. Right, right. I had to get yeah. Barnes and Noble and Borders to buy books to teach myself yes. you know, how to do yes. all that. And it's yes. so wild now and people who didn't live through that like my kids are old enough that they remember it they are 31 and almost 33 so they're old enough that they remember those beginning years but people who are a little bit younger than them it's like a foreign world to them they, yes, they do not them. know they do not know what a fax machine is or or you had to you had to dial the phone when you had to dial the phone with and if yeah. you messed up, you had to start over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So you did that first book now and then, so you started writing for yourself and you wrote several more books as you went. Is that how you progressed? Yeah. I just started um, my second idea was a, for a book for single moms. So I wrote the successful single mom as I was getting remarried, I had an idea watching an Oprah show where they were doing makeovers for single moms and Oprah's response 
to the before picture was, oh, you know, of course she looks like a schlumpadinka. She's a single mom. She doesn't have time to take care of herself and she looks uh -huh. terrible. And I was like, I'm a single mom. I'm, you know, I'm and still, I'm okay, I'm still right? okay. I'm doing okay, Oprah. So, <laughs> so, so I, I wrote the successful single mom and then that turned into a six book series. And this, uh, for a really long time until about 2019, I would just have all the ideas. I just had an unending list of ideas and I'm, I was always working on three books. There was the book oh, yeah, that I was cool. thinking about the book I was writing mm -hmm. and the book that I was publishing or that so I just the, published. The successful single mom. There were six books. And so what were the six books? Um, the successful single mom is the original book. And then it's the successful single mom gets rich, gets fit, finds love, gets an education and then a cookbook. And oh. the reason, uh, the reason I wrote all of those books is those were all problems that as a single mom, I encountered. So I yeah. wanted to get fit. And so how do you do that when you're a single mom and you have limited time, potentially limited budget? Like, how do you get the most out of your workout? And and what does being fit mean, right? It isn't just being skinny. It's being feeling strong and being healthy because yeah. you're carrying extra load, extra mm -hmm. stress, all the things, right? So then you want to get get rich, you want to be financially independent. And what does that look like? What does financial um, literacy look like? What does being re uh, financially responsible look like? How do you plan for all the things as a single mom? How do you find love again? If you want to go back to school, what does that look and who, how do you finance that? What are the special programs that are available? So I did that with a financial advisor, got her advice on that. Um, and then I did the cookbook because my kid wanted to eat every day, three meals. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you ate yesterday. Oh, like, you they ate. Want to eat. Andre, I can't yeah. believe they want to eat. Every day. I know. And so I thought, well, if I like, by the time we get to that part of the day, I've been working all day. She's been in school all day. She's cranky. She's ready to eat. I'm ready to eat. I'm hungry. Yeah. I don't have time to do the three hour pot roast with the right. salad and the dessert like this, you know, this, the days of, of, um, you know, Alice are over, right? Yeah. Like I didn't have an apron. And so I thought I'm just going to go in search of meals that are fast. So I found on your table in 20 minutes, seven ingredients or less. And then I found 150 recipes that were easy that you could pull together in a quick period of time. So that, you know, and that was including like lunches to pack for them and what are healthy breakfasts and that kind of stuff. So I just took it, I took it from the perspective of what were the problems that I had. And if I had a book that I could just pull off my shelf that answered my question, what would it be? That is brilliant. And you. basically you did with your series of books, what we tell entrepreneurs to do, find a problem and solve it. And Correct. I love that your books were problems that you had which made it even easier for you to write it. But it also, <laughs> even if you had to learn new stuff, it was stuff that was helping you. Yes. You know, it wasn't yes. boring and, oh, I got to write this thing. That's so cool. No, I not at all. No, not good. at all. Those were great. Those are, those are great books. And um, there's, I still sell them. People I was still say, go I mean, and you still sell them. There are, there are um, at any given time, 3 million single moms. Right yeah. in the U.S. and the life of a single mom is about three years, like from from breakup or divorce to repairing or marriage. There's okay. about thirty six months in there, and so um, all the time, the women who buy the books, read the books, uh -huh. go through the process, and then they will unsubscribe from my list, and they'll go, "It's not you, it's me. I got remarried. Yay!" So like yeah. that. Right. It's very it's really cool to see where they've come from Aww. because my books are meant to empower and inspire them and to let them know that they're rock stars. Right. They're like um, dancing backwards in high heels like you're doing all the things. And this is this is great. This isn't something to feel bad about. This is something that you can feel proud of yourself for. And okay. your kids I love that. I'm going to be happy. I love that line dancing backwards in high heels. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I love um, that. Like Fred Astaire and um, Gina, Gina Rogers, who is who is Fred Astaire's dance partner. But they was like Fred Astaire was like this amazing dancer. Ginger Rogers. Like, well, Ginger Rogers. Yeah, well, Ginger's dancing backwards in high heels, Fred. So I don't know. I think. Yeah, it's like, hello, this is a lot easier for hello. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right.
That's funny. So, and see, I didn't realize that you wrote books like that. I, I, I had the ones that I knew about were like more business like. So, yeah. so what came next after that? Well, so then I was doing um, executive coaching and I had come up with a process called the STMA short term massive action, which was really um, a great program for me that I developed for myself originally and then shared with the professionals that I would was coaching. And they would say, well, why am I doing this? Why are we doing it this way? What's the process? What's the thought process behind mm -hmm. this? And I thought I've got to write a book for them because they're paying me for time. Yeah. And we're using their time for me to explain to them my methodology, which seemed I it felt like I, it was robbing them of yeah. progress. Right. Because it's mm -hmm. like like I felt like Mr. Miyagi. Right. Like wax on, wax off. Like, don't <laughs> question. Just we don't have time for the questions. Just do it. So yeah. I wrote vision. Uh, right. I wrote vision to reality, which is the companion guide to that program. And it was originally just for my clients. And a couple of people in my mastermind at the time said, this actually needs to be a book you publish. I was not going to publish it. Wow. I was just going to give it with the program. And the feedback was, this is actually a solid book for you. And I happened into what happens when you have a proprietary process that you write a book about. People were reading the book and then saying, well, can I hire you for this? Are you yeah. available for coaching? Which wasn't my original intention. And now when I work with people on their books, I think I ask them to think about where the book fits into their business. What do you want the book to do for your business? Where does it fit in mm -hmm. um, to your business development efforts, to your marketing efforts? And I wasn't thinking about it that way. I was thinking about it from an education only perspective when I first wrote it, but it ended up being a very successful book that was a lead generator for me and a client generator for me and taught me that piece of the of the book business right of 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 the my coaching business and generating new business yeah and actually having strategy behind the book instead yes. of just i just want to get this information out you have right. which i see all the time yeah which i see all the time i just want to write my book and get it out there uh -huh. And I always have to say, I have a conversation with at least one person every day and they always say, I'm about 70 or 80% of the way done with my book. Mm -hmm. And then I start asking my pre write questions. Yeah. And I have a series of questions that I ask. So then when now someone says that in my head, I'm thinking, but are you, well, yeah, <laughs> are you 80% done? <laughs> when I said before we came on, I'm like halfway through. Yeah. You're already yeah. walking through your list, right? Yes. Well, I'm already thinking, and, and, and this is what I teach, right? Is like, here's the, here are the things to consider before you start writing, because when you have intention and purpose, when you've thought about like, what are all the things you need to know? Mm -hmm. What are all the things you need to bake into the book? Who is the book for? What do you want them to do? What do you want the the reader who really likes you to do and who thinks you could be the person they want to work with? What do you want them to do? And how are they going to know that you're accessible? Because and authors used to be inaccessible people and now yeah. we're very accessible. And so how do you communicate? Gosh, mm -hmm. I really like Lisa. I want to hire her yeah. for this. And so there's a mechanism for that. There are triggers for that, that the right person is going to say, I want more from you. Mm -hmm. And that all has to go into the book. So, and that's before the writing piece. Yeah. Well, and, and so it book, took me a, a bit of time to figure that out is all. I, I was going to say, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say the funny thing is that's a lot like web design. You know, it's like, hello, no, before you even think about what it looks like, you have to think about, what are you trying to get out of this? What do you want the people right. to do? How do you, how can they get to what you want to do? What what right. you want them to do? Make it easy for them. So it is that's very much like that. Very similar. It's very very similar to doing anything. Like let's go on vacation. Well, where are we going? Right. What is it? What do we want to do? Do we want to get a tan or do we want to go skiing? Like how are we going to fly or drive? What yeah. shoes? You know we're. We're ladies, right? So we're like, what are we? What shoes are we going to wear? Because I don't want my feet to hurt while we're doing all the things. True, yeah, it's the yeah. same. It's exactly the same thing. And so you have to begin with the end in mind. But there are several ends, right? There's when mm -hmm. the book is published. How are you turning it into money? How are you repurposing the content 
to yeah. turn it into a course or a coaching program or a, a keynote presentation? And are you doing ancillary products with it? Do you have a, mm -hmm. a companion planner, companion guide or all those things? And then yeah. how can you make it so that 10 years from now, someone is still buying and, and yeah. reading your book and connecting with you? All of those things factor in when you have a blank page and thinking those things through are mm -hmm. very helpful for the whole rest of the process. Yeah, it, yeah, it gives you a framework to formulate everything within that yeah. everything you have in there has a purpose yeah that it needs to yes. have some kind of purpose that helps yes. you and the reader get to the goal that you want them to get to what was yeah. that <laughs> that's my cat oh, oh okay well i'm this surprised my, my cat. cat hasn't come through i have a cat named thumper who normally you know makes an appearance and has her tail everywhere of Until course everybody fell in love with her and my friend monifa <laughs> that i met through business started a hashtag last year free thumper and then once everybody <laughs> wanted thumper thumpers like whatever i'm done with y'all you know? i'm done with you yeah. 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 no you know. my cat came and got up in my lap and went around the computer was behind Aww. the computer took a little nap while we've been talking and then decided to roll away so she's so done funny. she's done with her nap yes so what would you say over the years, what are what are either the biggest or some of the biggest mistakes that you've seen people make? And I know you've kind of talked I've about made them all. Of them. Yes, I will yeah. I I will tell you all the mistakes I made because okay. those are the mistakes I see people making. Um <laughs> let's see, starting with uh designing their own cover or using a cheap cover design service uh -huh. or even buying a pre-made cover. Yeah. as opposed to getting a custom cover. And everything I'm about to say is with the long-term success and um, effectiveness of a book in mind. Yeah. So sometimes people will say, but I don't have to spend that much money or I don't have to do it that way. I can just do cheap, fast, and easy. Yeah. And you can, you absolutely can do that. But if you want a book that's going to work for you forever, Mm -hmm. right you then have to put in some time and money so this is my disclaimer for quality right yeah. for making it look like it came out of traditional publishing but you still get to have all the control of it right so not having a great cover like having um a cover that is not on genre or on brand or mm -hmm. or thought through um uh clever book titles where you have to explain what they mean yeah so not having a title that tells people exactly what they're getting um from reading the book so i see people try to be uh, cute mm -hmm. or or funny or clever in their titles and then someone will pass it by because you're not always going to be standing next to your book or next to the person's phone who's looking at your book and they're going to go mm -hmm. i don't know what this means next yeah right so, you don't so want not them titling them. it. Yeah, don't make them think. Don't make them guess. They, you want them to say, this is a book for me, I have to have it, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. So the title is what the book is about, not anything cute or clever. Yeah. Um, so titling and subtitling are important. Um, I see people not getting their books edited, so they or they or not edited by a professional. So my criteria for an editor is someone who has worked in traditional publishing and follows a manual of style. And mm -hmm. also in the little box on their tax return, when it says profession, it says editor, it says editor. Yeah. Yes. So someone who was a 10th grade English teacher, they're fine and I'm sure they can read but they're not making sure that your book is up to standard, which is what you want. You want your book next to a traditionally published book to look just as good or better and to yeah. read just as good or better. Mm -hmm. And for people who read, you see mistakes and yeah. sentences can be clunky and you want the, the read to be joyful and pleasurable for the reader yeah so that they get to the end of the book and they say lisa you are my people here's my american express card right yeah that's definitely what we yeah. want you know yeah. i read a book recently and i was really surprised because the author was relatively well known and i can't remember if, if this one was self-published or publishing house but i noticed a few things in it because i do read a lot i noticed yes. a few things that i was like man they really missed you know so it just things. jumped out to me it might not have to other people but I was really surprised at some of the things that seemed to have slipped through the cracks and people get yes. from those things. 
Yes, and that, and here's the here's the asterisk to that. The, mm -hmm. It's not a judgment. It's not an indictment because when I'm when I do a book, I read it. However, all the drafts, right? So sometimes it's seven drafts. Yeah, between the drafts that I write and the draft that goes to editing and comes back from editing and goes mm -hmm. to the proofreader and comes back from the proofreader and goes to the advanced reader team and comes back from the advanced reader team. And then five years later, someone will say, did you know there's a typo on page 61? Yeah. And sure enough, I'll go and pull it out. Yeah. And I, like, you have to have the self-esteem of a typo, man. Those things, they're, they're pesky little suckers. They're going to stick, and, <laughs> gonna stick in there. you know what something is supposed to say, that's what you see. That's what you see. Exactly yeah. right. Which is why you need a book publishing team, mm -hmm. right? That includes an editor and a proofreader and other sets of eyes on your work because you're just gonna miss it. Yeah. You're just gonna miss it. And then the last thing that I see people making a mistake about, well, there's two things, well, three things. Okay, so we'll go with three. I could go on. <laughs> yeah. um, is that they don't hire a copywriter. So they think that writing is writing. And so they try to write the sales copy, the back cover copy for mm -hmm. their book which is meant to be done by someone with that very special skill. So I write books, but I don't write copy. Okay. Copy isn't my my skill. So you wanna mm -hmm. hire someone who is a trained copywriter mm -hmm. and writes book descriptions, which is, a, again, like copy isn't the same. Like, yeah, um, all, different, more, all copy is different. Yeah, copy needs to, it's more selling it and marketing it and making right. people want to buy it. It's not Correct. in the it's book. It's not the right. voice of the author, right? It's not meant to be the same as the inside of the book. And mm -hmm. a lot of times my authors will say, but this doesn't sound anything like me. And I'm like, good. It's not meant to. It's meant to take the eyes on your book because someone looks at a book and what's the first thing they do? They either flip it over and read the back cover copy or they read the sales copy on Amazon, which is yes. the, basically the same. Usually the same, copy. yeah. It's usually the same with a couple of little mm -hmm. differences. And it's the copy that converts to the sale. If the if the book copy doesn't sell the book, yeah. then next, and there are so right. many books. There are so many books. You have one half of a second really to get someone mm -hmm. to go, I want to buy that book. I want to read that book. This is the book I'm looking for. And so you can't leave that to chance. Okay. Well, I hear a, a lot of people talk about um, like Amazon bestsellers and they'll like um, kind of make fun of or whatever people that put their book into some obscure sub, 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 sub category yeah. so they can then say they're a bestseller. What do, what's your opinion or whatever in that? So I have a very strong opinion, as you might imagine, and it really is for the good of the author long term. Mm -hmm. And so you can be an Amazon bestseller by putting your book in a subcategory, but that defeats the purposes of engaging the algorithms of Amazon yeah. to sell okay. your book. So if you want to engage Amazon as your online retail sales partner, putting your book about website marketing in the kitten leg warmers category <laughs> confuses confuses the algorithms. It right. doesn't know who to market it to. And mm -hmm. so you can be number one in that category and be an Amazon bestseller. But I'm gonna suggest that you wanna be an, a best earner. Yes. Meaning that your book is going to get into the hands of the readers who love it and then will create word of mouth and share it. It does need to be with the right keywords in the right categories, mm -hmm. which is a mistake I see people making is they launch a book at 99 cents and they tell the whole world and they put their book in obscure categories. So they get that Amazon bestseller tag, mm -hmm. but just make a, a little note of that book and go back in two months time and look at the ranking on the day that they do that and look at the ranking two months later. And yeah. you'll notice that the rank has fallen significantly. And once your rank falls, you're not ever going to get it back up. So okay. the short term win is to sell a whole bunch of books at 99 cents and make 35 cents a book, which is just a bummer Yeah, right? for all that work for 35 cents. Mm -hmm. You're better off launching at full price after having an advanced reader team and engaging those algorithms in a proper way and mm -hmm. letting them serve the book up. And I'm sure we, anyone watching this and you and I both, I know I've gotten three emails from Amazon to say, here are the other books we think you should be reading. Here are the yeah. books you need to read. Here's the next book on your, 
you know, are you looking for something to read on array? Because I know you want to read these 27 books that yeah, you have read. Yeah, they're not going to send you the kid and leg warmer books. They're not because yeah. they they're they're going to send me the books that I need to read by the authors I've already read right. or by other authors that are like those authors or by other, uh, other mm -hmm. books that are like the books that I've already read. That's how the algorithms work. So if you don't engage them and they die, you've killed your book. Great which is point. just such a bummer. Yeah. I have a good friend who's a New York Times bestselling author. She's written dozens of bestsellers and she used to laugh. I mean, like, I remember like 15, 20 years ago, she said to me, we were talking about New York Times bestseller and she's like rolling her eyes. She's like, yeah, a lot of these people, their basements are full of books. You know, it's kind yeah. of like the same yeah. thing. It's like people buy their own books or whatever. Just so they can be a bestseller. Yeah, so and it doesn't really mean, it's an ego thing, but it doesn't mean anything in the long run. So you spent your money to have your book in the basement so that you can say you're a bestseller. So it's kind of yeah. like. And ultimately that's okay if that's what somebody wants. If they're yeah. like, look, I, it will make a difference for me with a contract or yeah. with whatever. If that makes sense for you, there's mm -hmm. no judgment, right? In my mind, it's either True. effective or ineffective, right? So if that's an effective move for you, and I know people that have said I've spent $250,000 to make Wall Street Journal, New York Times, but it's now you have to sell this many books on this platform, this many books on this platform, this mm -hmm. many books on this platform. And so what are you really going for? Yeah. And is it really going to be a, mm -hmm. a 2x, 10x, 100x return on your time and investment? Or would you d be better to do it a different way that might be actually more effective in the long run? Mm -hmm. Just something well, we to think about, right? It's a strategy. It's it's strategy. Yeah. Or what, lack, or what is your thereof. role? What are you trying to get right. out of it and then right. work backwards to what your approach is going to be? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So um, what's your most recent book? Oh, my can most recent book. <laughs> can I remember? Yes. My most recent book I published in December of 2019. Very proud to, to write and publish The Miracle Morning for Teachers with yeah. Hal Elrod, which is a which is a passion project. That's awesome. Um, um, we wanted to to take the the Miracle Morning Lifesavers, the pra the practices of the most successful people in the world, the most successful and effective people in the world, and introduce them to the people who spend the most time with our children, with our next generation. And so, empowering teachers to practice silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. So self-care, right? Self-care, yeah. um, self-development, personal development, all those things, and then teaching it to kids. So that book um, will be published. Um, I just got the the cover not maybe a week ago that it's being published in German. So that's so, the, one for, the one for kids or the one for teachers? or The, the one, one for teachers. Okay. The one for teachers. Yeah, I'm but glad that, I asked you though what your most recent book is because my sister is actually a Spanish teacher and her birthday's oh. next weekend. I need to oh. get that for her for her birthday. That'll be perfect. Yes. Yes, she we don't have it in Spanish yet, but that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't watch my show, so she'll, she'll it'll so, still be a surprise. Yeah, it'll still be a surprise. She won't know, but I'm so I'm really glad that that so and tell me the uh, the book um you must write the book, right? Or you must have, write. Yeah, I have one. I have one. Yeah, you, you must. must write a book. You must write a book. I have that you book. It's book. great. So tell okay. tell the audience about that and how that came to be. Yeah. So this book, um, th this is one of those books that was a a bigger than honoré kind of a thing. Um, I was honored to be asked by Amazon to go to New York and do a media breakfast in 2016. And they were bringing in five authors, including me, to talk to the media about KDP, their platform for publishing, and how they wanted to encourage more professionals to write and publish books on Amazon. And at the time, my most recent book was a book on divorce called The Divorced Phoenix. And so they were like, we're just going to feature your most recent book. And I was like, well, this is just a book from my perspective. I am not a divorce expert, right? I am not doing any of those types of things and the breakfast got rescheduled and so I had the idea to write this book I said would it be helpful if at least one of us had a book on why everyone should write and publish a book yeah. and parentheses on Amazon it was not meant to be is not meant to be gratuitous 
right? But they are providing an awesome platform for authors, certainly one that changed my life. And they said, yes, yes, please write the book. So that's a great idea. In very short order, I wrote, you must write a book, which then I published a companion workbook, I must write my book. So it's the steps in the book. And then because Amazon was behind the book and and lots of people want to write books, I now teach a course on it. And for some people, I actually do the process for them. And it's been, you know, the gift that keeps on giving, um, which is just so great, which is just so great. And now I get book babies. That's what I call the the (laughs) books that are that are um, inspired by this book, which is really fun. That's so cool, though, because they were there to have you speak to help them get people to write books yeah. and then you recognized this opportunity to write a book that you felt fit your career better than the, the single mom thing. So it's like this, circle, yes. you know, everything yes. is off of each other. So they yes. were helping you, you were helping them and everything Absolutely. worked out great for yes. all of you. Yes. So and five years later, and it helped everybody that was there. Yes. Yes. And, um, it was in Forbes and Fortune, like articles. I had lots of wonderful articles and it opened doors for me. And I, I got to go on different podcasts and, and do wonderful things and meet wonderful people and help them become authors, which is the thing that changed my trajectory, right? So now when I get to get someone and say, I'm going to give you the benefit of all of my experience in your yeah. first book. So you don't yeah. get to make the same mistakes. So you don't have to make the same mistakes that I made. You can have the benefit of my experience with your book really Mm -hmm. makes me feel good because I feel like I'm, I'm, I get to be the person I wish I had when I first started, if that makes sense. And you're giving them a shortcut because they get to hop over all the hard lessons that you learn. It's like having a coach mentor in anything. You learn from all the mistakes. Yes. And, and happy and happy to do that. And I can explain what to do and when and why and how and who you need to do it. And also there's no finger pointing, right? There's no like, you're making a mistake. Cause I have all these fingers pointing back at me like, Oh yes. Typo on the back cover. Uh-huh. Yep. Check. Uh, didn't full justify the interior file. Yep. Made that mistake too. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. All the, I made all the mistakes. And so I can say that here's a mistake and here's why it's a mistake. And Here's why it was a mistake for me, something to consider, right? Because I don't ever want someone to feel discouraged or overwhelmed, which is what yeah. this process can do. You can say, well, it's just too hard. I'm not going to do it. So I'm one part cheerleader and one part coach yeah. and one part Sherpa in the process because I want everyone to get to the other end mm-hmm. of the rainbow and have their book. And when yeah. you know someone, I went to lunch with someone today and he said, oh, I'm thinking about writing a book. And he pulled out his business card. And I often joke with people that when you hand out your business card, you should hand it out and say, here, would you throw this away? I know. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have a book, no one ever throws away a book, even mm-hmm. if they don't read it or it's not the right book for them. It's surely going to find its way to someone right. who could use it, right? It's going to be passed on, but no one just says, oh, I don't need this book. Let me yeah, throw it, it in the trash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a great point. Yep. It really is. Gosh, I've I've enjoyed talking with you so much. You have so many great points. Tell Thank everybody you. how they can find you, how they can find out more about you and about more about working with you. Oh, wait, can I ask you, what yes. are like, if somebody wants to work with you, what would be like price ranges or whatever for working with you and your team? Yep. So I um, you ask that right up front, don't you? Um, yes, I, I do all the time. So I have the course called Publishing PhD, which is based on this book, which is a fully comprehensive eight week course that I teach live. And I'm about to turn it into a blended learning situation. So it'll be live and on demand. Okay. With access with still access to me. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, the course is 6000. Or I have a self study course that has no time with me. That's 1300. Okay. If someone has more money than time, I do have a bespoke a uh, custom service where I act as the publisher for them, but they retain all the rights mm-hmm. and without a ghostwriter around 75,000. And then it goes up from there. So okay. between 150 and 200,000 okay. um, is, is, a, is that service that I provide as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so and you you do more of the strategy and the planning and whatever, and then your team does the ghost writing and the copywriting and the design and stuff. If somebody actually works with you on a project, yes. If if someone hires me to do it, I call it automatically becoming an author. So yeah. I have a six month small book package that's forty thousand, mm -hmm. and I have a team that does everything. The author just says. Yes, I like this. No, I don't like it. So mm -hmm. the time that they spend is in approving things and working with the ghostwriter. And I actually handle all of the details. That's awesome. Um, so like on their behalf. The ghostwriter, do they most do, does the person whose book it is, do they mostly like record their thoughts and then the ghostwriter uses it? The inner the ghostwriter has a process. The ghostwriters I use have a process for interviewing the author mm -hmm. so that the book sounds like the author wrote it yeah they don't have to write they don't have to write a word yeah right and so then it's a clean manuscript it's much faster when you use yeah. a ghostwriter um ultimately unless they write their book in a weekend like you did but um <laughs> generally speaking it's about 20 or 30 hours of interviewing mm -hmm. the ghostwriter for a full-size book and the full-size book is 50 60 70 maybe eighty thousand words right so there's yeah. a, a nice range there but so in the small book book. package that you mm -hmm. just mentioned so how many words for that? The 50, 16,000? Uh, 15,000 words in the, in oh, the okay, smaller okay. book package. Okay, gotcha. yes. okay yes, yeah. but that's a six month, that's a six month turn. Yeah. Where the, we, the author is interviewed and we do everything else. And within six months, the book is launching. And as a matter of fact, there's a book, um, the, Bil the Brilliant Businesswoman by Danny Whitestone. That is one of those books. Yeah, okay. it's, it's launching right now. Awesome. Um, it's launching right now. Um, and so for so, the launch, do y'all help like set up PR and get them interviews and stuff? Or how does that work? Or do you have I have a I have a resource. I have a resource for that. I actually do more um uh scrappy marketing, if you will. Yeah. Um I I do have a, a connection with a former Oprah producer who oh. is an author media coach, and so she trains authors how to connect with the media and get on shows without PR, oh, not that yeah. I'm against PR, but she has a process that as a post producer for Oprah for many, many seasons, she understands what producers are looking for for different shows. So if you have a book and you wanna get into the media, mm -hmm. especially for that validation, right? That's really what media is for, for authors. Right. I don't know that there's a lot of book selling that goes on. I know people mm -hmm. have gone on the Today Show and sold a hundred books. But if you have that clip of the Today Show on your website, it's like being a TED speaker or a TEDx speaker. Right. The notice, right? They they recognize that that that's important, mm -hmm. and it's a validator. Yeah. But my role is to help them to monetize their book, and so when I am working with someone, I'm helping them to write and publish their book. But the most important function that I serve is to help them to optimize the book. So to create that reader author relationship okay. and then to monetize the book, which means I put my brain on their business. So I put my strategic brain on their business to help them to figure out how do you turn this book into money? What else can you do to repurpose the content of the book? What types of programs can you offer? Mm -hmm. And how do you use the book to generate that business? So I provide a fully comprehensive marketing plan for my authors. And I'm working on a, a medical book right now. And so the author is doing a book and a workbook and a website and a podcast and nice. a course. And all of that is part of the, the strategy for the book. So we started in September of last year. We'll launch the book in September of this year. And then it's an annual book. So there will be updates to this book every year Great. for many, many years. So we're thinking much bigger picture than just, you know, the first conversation, which was, I've been wanting to write this book for 10 years. Uh -huh. And then I put him through the questions. Okay, well, what do you want the reader to do? Uh -huh. How does this fit into what your long-term vision is? And really got good clarity on that. Mm -hmm. That's actually my favorite part, Lisa, is helping people to figure out how to connect with people to be of service to people and then monetize that. Yeah. So it's a win, right? It's a, it's not just the win for the author. They don't just make more money. Yeah. But it's a win for the reader or the new client that connects because of the book. And That's then so the right person is going to really want to connect with the author and they're yeah. going to be so grateful that they found the author through the mm -hmm. book and then they get to work with them at a deeper level. So some yeah. people read, you must write a book and they write a book and they send it to me. And some people read it and go, I need more information. 
Mm -hmm. right? And this, this, I'm just using myself as an example. And then some people say, here's my American Express card. Like I'm too busy doing these things over here. I do not have time to write a book. Mm -hmm. So do all the things. Uh -huh. and let me know when I can go to my party and launch the book. <laughs> yeah, let me just tell me when and where to go. Just um, tell me where the party is and what, what kind of cake we're having. <laughs> do you ever have people that come and they say, this is what I want my book to be about. And then after you talk with them and then you're like, no, that really isn't what it should be about. And, and the reason I'm asking, I have a friend who founded a TEDx organization and she said that is one of the biggest the most common thing they have is people come in and they're like i want to talk about this and they're like nobody cares about that you need to yes. slow down so you have a lot of that too i don't have a lot of it what i see a lot is people get a title in their head and it's that clever or cute thing that i talked yeah. about which they understand what the concept is but then they have to explain it yeah or they're wanting to write to a, a, a market of which there is very little. So okay. it's a lot of effort that goes into a book, but we can use kitten leg warmers again, cause that's my favorite. <laughs> if you're gonna write, if you're gonna write a book on kitten leg warmers, you have to go and, and see, are people searching for books like that? Are there other books like that? Which is a, is a market validator, but then how many searches are there and what's mm -hmm. the conversion and how much are those other books making? Yeah. So if an example I use in my course is that when I had a mortgage broker reach out to me and say, I want to write a book for mortgage brokers, we did the analysis and there are 40,000 mortgage brokers, which is not really a lot yeah. because you're not ever going to get 100% market share. Yeah. So you want to sell 40,000 books, which means you need to have 4 million in your market. Yeah. So my suggestion was instead of writing a book, on being a great mortgage broker for mortgage brokers. Why don't you write a book for real estate agents? Because there are lots of real estate agents and new ones all the time. And mm -hmm. then write about the things that real estate agents need to know for their clients. So as a real estate agent, you need to make sure that your clients can get financing. Yeah. And there's all different kinds of financing. There's reverse mortgage and there's first time home buyers mm -hmm. and there's military, right? So you could write a bunch of shorter books and give those out to real estate agents and then they're sending clients to you. So instead of yeah. being, I'm the best mortgage broker, why don't you be a good mortgage broker too? Like why don't you empower real estate agents and their clients? And that again is that triple win that I was talking about earlier. So sometimes I just can suggest perhaps this is a different approach yeah. for an even better return. And then sometimes people just want a legacy book. They just want to write their story so that their grandkids know what really happened. Yeah. And that's okay too. That's just not what you would pay 40,000 or 150 or $250,000 to do. You could just write your book and go down to Office Depot and, and have them print it out, right? Yeah. Um, for you. So sometimes I will say, if you don't have an outcome for your book, if it's not going to serve a greater purpose, maybe going through all of this isn't, where you want to put your money yeah right yeah. yeah so i try to look at it from from how can the author win in the best possible way and what's mm -hmm. the long-term um good karma a, a, you know honorable thing to do and help well, i just love everything that you do i already love your books but just being Thank able you. to talk with you and pick your brain and understand and the strategy that goes behind it. It's just so yeah. cool. you basically you're helping them build a business on Ray for yes. a lot of these Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes. And that's what business. I want. Yeah. It's awesome. Yes. And that's and what I want. That's yeah. what I want. Cause that's what I've done. And so it's, I, I, I got to learn mm -hmm. and I got a lot of scraped knees and elbows and made a lot of mistakes. And so when yeah. I can say to someone like, come on, come behind the curtain, come behind the velvet rope. Like, let me show you how to do this. Uh -huh. And then, to do this and monetize this and monetize that. I have a guy in my mastermind because I know we're connected through mastermind. Yeah. A guy in my mastermind who called me and he said, I'm writing a book for parents to teach their kids about leveraged income and passive income and multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. And he has a six year old and he, every thing in the house they rent from the six year old. So oh, I was like, funny. when I use the toaster, when I use the toaster, we pay our daughter and we teach her about uh, obtaining assets. And then leasing them out or renting them out to that other people. That is such a good idea. 
Yeah. And I said, well, then where's the companion book for the kids? Where's the yeah. children's book that goes with that? And he went, I hadn't even thought of that. I was only yeah. thinking about educating the parent, but of course yeah. there needs to be a companion book for the kids. Yeah. So that they so they can learn in the way that they learn best. And then they learn in the way and they And then they get older and then they I know the adult book and then they I have know. kids and it's that right. whole cycle. That's brilliant. Right. You're right. so smart. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, thank you. I appreciate I it. it. Well, and the thing is, you're like me. I just love strategy and big picture me things. Too. And yes. Ideas. Yes. That's the most fun part, isn't it? For yes. me, yes. for us, people like us. Yes. Yes. The technical pieces of, of publishing a book now after I've done it 200 times. So yeah. Like that, that part is not hard for me at all or challenging for me because it's that's the easy part. And yeah. there's a lot to know, a lot of things that can be done correctly or incorrectly. So I that gets handled very easily. The fun part for me is to sit down and say, okay, so tell me about your business. Tell me what you've been doing. Tell me what you want to do. Tell me how you generate business. And yeah. then let's figure out how to turn your book mm -hmm. into the center of your wheel of fortune. Yeah. So it's the center and you're creating all these spokes of income in different mm -hmm. ways to connect with people in ways that work for them and in internet marketing, which I'm not necessarily a fan of that whole funnel mm -hmm. process, but it's yeah. just a little bit different take on that. It's like some people can afford a book. Some mm -hmm. people can afford an ebook. Some people can afford a physical book. Some people can afford a course. Some people can afford coaching. So, right. And yeah. so if you create something that serves all different types of people, mm -hmm in ways that you want to serve them, then you make a living and you help people as well. And yeah. so that for me is the most fun part is to really sit down and go, okay, so we've got the book, the book is handled mm -hmm. and we've made sure we put all the stuff in the book that needs to be in there. Now let's, let's get that kid out on the, out in the, you know, on the playground and get it working. <laughs> yeah. I want to yeah. tell you, I meant to tell you this, Arl. do you know Richard Mulholland? He owns Missing Link, founder of Missing Link presentation mm. powerhouse in uh -uh. South Africa. You would love Richard. He's written okay. a, written several books, but he was telling me that with his books, he said like, you know, and he's a paid speaker. He teaches people to be professional speakers, love but it. he speaks, you know, all over. And he said, but a lot of times they won't have a bucket of money to pay a speaker, but they will have a bucket of money to buy 500 copies of his book. That's right. That's and they, right. And so, and he said, I would rather than buy all these copies of my book to of give course. to the people that come than, than pay me to be there. So he ends up making money anyway, but he's got this thing out in the wild that goes from person to person. So that's another yeah. way that you can yes. use your book. I thought that was really yes. interesting. That's one of the things if you're if you speak to colleges, right? Colleges mm -hmm. don't have speaker budgets, but they yeah. do have book budgets. They'll buy yeah. book budgets all day. And now with online presentations, mm -hmm. um, there is a great, I'll put in a, a plug for one of my favorite book distribution channels is Book Funnel. So if you have the okay. raw files for your book, so PDF, emo, uh, um, EPUB or Mobi, you can put it on Book Funnel and then sell copies of your book through Book Funnel. So I do a presentation, I'll sell 250 copies or 500 copies of my book at an ebook. Right. They're just oh, ebooks, okay. and people get a link and they can put it in their Kindle app or on their Kindle or in their iBooks mm -hmm. app or in their bon Barnes and Noble app. And the, the, the conference can buy the books and then they get a certain number of downloads. Oh, okay. The, uh, that, um, yeah, for people yeah. to, to yeah. download and, and to read the ebook. But that's, you know, the, you make a very good point, which is someone discovers you through a book they can mm -hmm. discover all of the other things, right? The book is the entry point to your yeah. universe, to your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And so all they may do is read a book, but they're gonna be enriched by reading a book, right? The right. Is always and in they're the gonna book. share with other people when they when they like yes. it. They're always gonna yes. tell other people. That's so, right, that's right. Well, I have had you for an hour, so I'm gonna let you go, but I feel Alrighty. like I can talk with you all night, Henri. I think so, I think so. We'll have to oh do it gosh. again. This has we'll been so much again. fun. Thank you so much for spending my pleasure. time with us. I really appreciate Absolutely it. Absolutely my pleasure. I truly appreciate and, the in invitation, thank you. And tell everybody before we go how they can find you. 
Um, so I'm at Honoré on all the social media and honorécorder.com is my website. And you can get a free copy um, through Book Funnel, which I was just talking about, a free e ebook copy of this on, okay. the front, uh, on the front page of my website. So go and download that and grab a free copy. Okay, cool. I'm glad you started on your book. I hadn't heard of that. So I'm glad that you told me about it. Book Funnel is my favorite. I know the guy who created the program and it's oh, cool. brilliant for authors, for book distribution, for email yeah. list building, all the things. It's wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I am going to let you go, but hold on for a second. Cause after we go off, I have something I want to okay. tell you, but everybody out there, I want y'all to know next Tuesday is going to be really special. I have a 17 year old young man yeah. who is high functioning autism he is an entrepreneur. He is a uh, like second degree red belt in Taekwondo, which is right below black belt. He plays bass guitar. He puts together these huge Lego of mechanical things and castles that he pays for the kids himself. Himself, He is going to be on talking with us and sharing his entrepreneurial experience and how, you know, being different and learning differently. And, but he is just amazing. Disclaimer, he is my cousin, but he is amazing. I'm so inspired by him every day. So I hope that y'all will join me and Trevor next, next Tuesday on Disrupt Your Nail. So thanks everybody. And I'll see you soon. And I'll see you in a minute, Honoré. Okay. Okay. Thanks.